ಆಂ ಆತ್ಮಾವಭಾಷಯೋ ಬುಧ್ಯಾದೀನಿಂದ್ರಿಯಾನ್ಯಪಿ ದೀಪೋ ಘತಾತ್ಮ ಜಡೈಷ್ಠೈರ್ನವಭಾಷ್ಯತೆ ಆತ್ಮ ದ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಅವಭಾಷಯತಿ ಇಲ್ಯೂಮಿನೇಟ್ಸ್ ಏಕ ಸಿಂಗಲ್ ಬುಧ್ಯ ಆದೀನಿ ಇಂಟಲೆಕ್ಟ್ ಎಟ್ಸ್ ಇಂದ್ರಿಯಾನಿ ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಓರ್ಗನ್ಸ್ ಅಪಿ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ದೀಪ ಲ್ಯಾಂಪ್ ಘತ ಆದಿವತ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದ ಪಾಥ್ಸ್ ಎಟ್ಸ್ ಸ್ವಾತ್ಮ by themselves jadai inert tai by themselves na not avabhasyate illuminated just as a lamp illuminates a jar or pot so also the atman illumines the mind sense organs etc these material objects cannot illuminate themselves because they are inert namaste so this verse has to be understood very, very carefully because it actually refers to the secondary brahman the lower brahman brahman with qualities saguna brahman or shakti huh why is that well because it's related to the material energy number 1 number 2 it's giving light illuminating the material energy and making it appear as if it's conscious and active although it's actually not So this is the secondary brahman that which creates products that which is related to the material existence that which actually forms the material creation and animates it and makes everything happen this is the maya shakti the secondary brahman now this is not a put down this is not a criticism because the maya shakti the saguna brahman is also transcendental beginningless all powerful inconceivable and so on but at the same time we have to be aware that the primary brahman or the higher brahman which is the cause of the inferior brahman is actually beyond all that it is not related to anything as a cause or as a source or as a uh, emitter of light or energy or consciousness or anything that's why this higher brahman is very rarely realized very rarely understood most people when they think of brahman think of the cause of the creation the origin of consciousness and so on but that's the secondary brahman that's the brahman with qualities let me read my favorite verse again from the mandukya upanishad they consider the fourth quarter of brahman turiya to be that which is not conscious of the internal world nor conscious of the external world nor conscious of both the worlds nor a mass of consciousness nor simple consciousness nor unconsciousness which is unseen beyond empirical dealings beyond the grasp of the organs of knowledge and action uninferable unthinkable indescribable 
whose valid proof consists in the single belief in the self, in which all phenomena cease, and which is unchanging, auspicious, and non-dual. That is the self, and that is to be known. So, in other words, the popular ideas of the self, or Brahman, as being this, this limitless light, huh, are true of the secondary Brahman, but not of the primary. The primary Brahman is without qualities, without consciousness, although it is possessed of unlimited self-awareness, objectless awareness, turiya, turiyatita, which never comes in contact with the material energy or anything else except the secondary Brahman. So this is a conundrum. This is a mysterious difficulty for those who want to realize Brahman. Brahman is not a something, but it's not a nothing either. <laughs> it's just not the kind of thing that we're used to because it has no relation with anything else. It's unrelated. It's in his own space, so to speak. Although space is a, a byproduct of the secondary Brahman. That, I, what I'm trying to say is, it is separate from everything else. Uninferable. In other words, you would never guess that it could even exist. Why? Because our mentality is oriented towards phenomena. And phenomena have a cause, they are an effect, they require time, space, energy, you know, cause and effect, qualities, and so on. So when we think of Brahman, we think of the supreme cause of all these phenomena. But that's the secondary Brahman, Shakti. That's okay. <laughs> that Brahman is still worthy of our worship and adoration. But we should also know that there is a superior Brahman, a primary Brahman, the actual Brahman beyond this. Because for us to have consciousness in the material world as a incarnate being, a jiva, requires ignorance and the primary brahman is devoid of ignorance let me read you another passage and then we'll discuss some more a man without self-identification with the body mind senses etc cannot become a cognizer and as such the means of knowledge cannot function for him since perception and other activities of a man are not possible without accepting the senses, etc., as his own, since the senses cannot function without the body as a basis, since nobody engages in any activity with a body that has not the idea of the self superimposed on it, since the unrelated self cannot become a cognizer unless there are all these mutual superimpositions of the self and the body and their attributes on each other, and since the means of knowledge cannot function unless there is a cognizership, therefore it follows that the means of knowledge, such as direct perception as well as the scriptures, must have a man as their locus who is subject to nescience. That's quite a sentence. <laughs> Shankaracharya is just amazing in his ability to suss out and clarify what is what in the area of consciousness and existence. 
So basically what he's saying here is that not only the world, but also the scriptures and even the secondary Brahman is based on the concept of ignorance. The scriptures assume that the reader is suffering from ignorance and seek to enlighten him, isn't it? And the whole of all phenomena and existence and life and perception and everything is based on this idea of ignorance. Maybe it would help if I translate this passage into positive language. A man with self-identification with the body, mind, senses, etc., becomes a cognizer, and as such, the means of knowledge function for him. Since perception and other activities of a man are possible by accepting the senses, etc., as his own, since the senses function with the body as a basis, since everybody engages in every activity with a body that has the idea of the self superimposed on it, since the unrelated self becomes a cognizer because there are all these mutual superimpositions of the self and the body and their attributes on each other, and since the means of knowledge functions because of the cognizership. Therefore, it follows that the means of knowledge, such as direct perception as well as the scriptures, must have a man as their locus who is subject to nescience. There, that's a bit clearer, huh? <laughs> so what we're saying here is that consciousness, perception, knowledge, the means of knowledge, activity, and so on, function and exist only because of nescience, maya, that which is not. How can something exist that is not? Well, it's an illusion. It's an illusion just like in the desert, if you see water, you know it's got to be a complete illusion, isn't it? There's no water in the desert. There's no snake in the rope. There's no blue in the sky. These are all superimpositions. And so is consciousness, perception, knowledge, and the means of knowledge, such as the senses, the scriptures, etc. Because all these things have an object. In other words, they're dualistic. And dualism is maya. It is the illusion that does not really exist. So all of these things such as the illumination of the body, mind, senses, etc., by the self, are functions of the secondary Brahman, the inferior Brahman, Maya Shakti. That's all right, and we should realize this Brahman, this Saguna Brahman, as a preliminary step to realizing the Nirguna Brahman, that Brahman, which is not related to anything, not a cause of anything, not the origin of anything, which does not emit or radiate or <laughs> call, become the creator of anything, in which there is no action whatsoever, no even consciousness, because there is no duality in it. If there is no duality, then it can't have consciousness because there's no subject-object distinction. 
Therefore, it is only a mass of objectless self-awareness. This is the higher Brahman. Aung Tat Sat. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namah Shivaya.